So now we've got a mom who came in, she delivered in the field, baby's doing great, but she's having quite the PPH. So you got blood coming out, where is it coming from, what's going on? Well, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is treat this like a trauma. Make sure she's got IVs in, she's getting fluids. If it's really a lot of blood that you've started blood products. You wanna take a rub on the belly. Is the uterus firm or is it soft? If you've got a big soft globular uterus, you wanna put a couple fingers inside and what you wanna do is kinda of make a claw-like motion with your hand clean out any clots or debris that you might find inside the uterus, bringing those clots out, and they can be large, is gonna help make sure that there's nothing keeping the uterus from contracting down. So it's not gonna be unusual when you put your hand in, you might pull out very large clots actually that are gonna be stuck in the vagina and the uterus. And as that uterus starts to cramp down and contract down, that's gonna help get your um, uterine fundus to come down to you. You're also going to want to start medications. IM or IV Pitocin, you need to throw it in the bag. If mom doesn't have an IV in yet, give her a shot. 10 units IM right in her leg. That's going to help start to get things going down. The other thing you can give is Methogen if she's not hypertensive, and that's going to be um, 0.2 IM again. If, the, if she is hypertensive, you can go to Hemabate, which is an F2-alpha agonist, so you don't want to give that to anyone with asthma or upper airway disease. So now you've got your rubbing and your removing of any clots or debris for your uterine acne piece. You're starting uterotonics to try to help that uterus contract down. The other thing that can cause PPH is you can have lacerations. So you want to inspect the outside. Do you have lacerations on the outside? Here we've got a little, what looks like either a second or partial third down into the um, rectum. We've got a little periurethral, but they're not really bleeding. So, you know, if you don't feel confident in repairing that and you're waiting for OB, you can put pressure on that if the bleeding is otherwise minimal. If you're having a lot of bleeding, the uterus is firm, you don't think it's coming from inside the uterus, the other thing you want to think about is lacerations higher up. So you want to use both hands, like kind of like um, paddles, and you want to look up inside the vagina and the uterus and look for lacerations of the wall. Do any of these lacerations that start here, do they extend up to the uterus? And that's called a sulcal laceration. And then I'm going to show you how to walk the cervix to look for cervical lacerations. So this is another vagina from another kind of model. So you can see you're inspecting the outside. There's no tears here. We're looking at the walls of the vagina, right and left. There's no tears here. And then you can see inside, you can see the cervix. And after a delivery, that cervix is going to be very floppy. It's going to be redundant. And what you want to do is you want to take a ring forceps. There's no nerve endings on the cervix. It's mostly just kind of a nausea reaction or cramping, which mom's already having from after delivery. And you wanna take that, you actually wanna take two of these, and you wanna walk that cervix, bring it down to you, and show each piece to yourself as you walk around the whole lip of that cervix so that you can see that there's no tears or lacerations. If you do find a spot with a tear or a laceration, you wanna put a clamp on each side. Now you can bring it down towards you and you can sew that together.